Get Nanny's ass up here. There go Nanny's dog. There go your boy Nanny's dog. He says that this fucker is a pit bull. He said that. This is the mom and dad. You know what I'm saying? Oh, he says granddad. Okay, that's a granddad. That's the dad, and that's Max. So you can see this motherfucker suspect as fuck. This blue motherfucker right here suspect as shit. And there go your dog Max. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> hey, he ain't never tried that. Schoolboy, hey. schoolboy, what up? What up, schoolboy? What? What's happening? What's happening? Good, good. Uh... Good chat today. Good topic. Supreme got the got the got the work going on. Got the work going on on the cam on the waking bait. You know what I'm saying? Looking good. Looking good. Supreme looking good. Yeah, schoolboy. So what you think, man? Uh, you know we've been talking about this for like he said. We're gonna talk about until next month. We're gonna switch to some a couple more topics, and then we all gonna just recycle them. Cause we gotta we gotta nail it into the ground and and put it to bed. So, right. What do you think about? I know I think I probably already asked you about this, but what, what do you how is, does it is it ridiculous? Is it a stretch for somebody to think that of of Barracuda and the Mayday line and the uh, the phenotypes? Give us give us some insight. I don't know when you popped in, but uh, right. This is what right. we've been talking uh, about pretty much you know when, whenever somebody you know whether they have experience or don't or think they do or whatever whenever they make a statement or give an opinion you know i always ask how did you come to that conclusion where'd you get that from and uh, sometimes they don't know sometimes they it's just an opinion sometimes it's an educated opinion sometimes it's facts and then you know if you disagree with them you know, you've got to ask, well, did you ever consider this? So with May Day, did you ever consider this? Right? Because people say, why do they say May Day has Tosa or whatever, Fila, Fila or whatever it is? Because of the way he looks. Right? That, that That's what everybody does. They don't know. Maybe he does have Tosa in him. Maybe he don't. I don't think he does. And I'll tell you why. Just like the the Tosa or the Bull Terrier or a lot of other breeds, the Pit Bull don't have their blood in them. Those breeds have Pit Bull in them. The Tosa has Pit Bull in it. If you look up Tosa and see what how it was developed, it's got Mastiff, it's got this and that, and it's got Bulldog. So I take that to mean that it has... English bulldog in it, which would be a pit bull or a descendant of the pit bull. So in my opinion, that's why Mayday looks the way he does. Not because he has Tosa, but because that look, that build, his head, the floppy ears are in pit bull. If you go back through history, you'll see it here and there and everywhere. So because the Tosa is a fighting dog, why wouldn't somebody take a fighting dog or a pit bull or whatever you want to call it, staff or bull and terrier and all that, and add it to the Tosa. And, you know, if they wanted bigger dogs, that's why it has Mastiff in it. At the same time, because the pit bull breed, the fighting dog is so old, goes back to ancient times. We've already talked about that. You have to ask yourself, does the pit bull have Mastiff in it? Yeah. Because originally... The Sumerians and then the Romans and then in the UK took their war dogs, which were considered what would be called mastiffs today, and and bred them for fighting each other as well. 
as fighting lions and people and tigers and all that. That's what they did with the dogs. People argue with me for a long time about that. And I finally found a damn picture of uh, a carving, stone carving, showing two guys in ancient Mesopotamia chasing their dogs off. The dogs are kind of in holes. And it says, you know, the origin of dog fighting or ancient dog fighting. And uh, there's the information is there. So I think that's why May Day looks the way he does, because that's in there, it's in him. Somewhere in the past, whatever. Now, if I'm wrong and somebody threw a toast in there, okay. It still has or has, still has roots of a bulldog, still has roots of fighting dog in it. But most people don't do any research. They don't question. They don't ask. They don't. They just come to conclusion mostly on looks. So, like you kind of alluded to, you know, if he has toto, where is it? Is it the parents, grandparents, great grandparents? Was it thirty years ago? Was it whatever? You know, because well, when school, you take school, something, boy, I asked, I asked that question because let's say that. There was a black dog, for instance, that somewhere popped up in the pedigree. We, we should be able to pinpoint exactly where it is. And that's the beauty of this breed. You know, you should be able to pinpoint what's going on. So if that's your claim that you make, we should know where it is. Yeah. Well, they can't pinpoint it because they don't know. And, and their excuse or their answer would be, well, they did it and they lied about it and they didn't tell nobody. Okay. That's an easy out. It's easy to say that. But but uh, like I was saying, you know, the all these all these different breeds or whatever it is, you know, they always think that the pit bull has that breed in it or it has white terrier or this or that, whatever it is. Just like the, the bull terrier. People think that the bull terrier was bred for fighting originally. It wasn't. Well, look at the history. It's bred as a show dog. So the bull terrier, the pit bull doesn't have bull terrier in it. The bull terrier has pit bull in it. That's why some of them will fight. And that's why some people supposedly or reportedly, like Kramasinski, added bull terrier to his dogs. Some people say he did. Some people say, no, he didn't. But that look, that slope to their head and all that, that's in the pit bull too. It, it's so, almost every build, every frame, every is in the pit bull because it's bred for function. Not and and that that form follows the function. So you're so, gonna have a variety of builds, a variety of colors, a variety of structure and temperament, behavior, fighting style, all that. So so to do and, the guy you're talking about, Mr. Darcy, Hinks, Hinks or something like that. Hinks or Hicks yeah, or something. Hinks. All right, right. now, Hicks. he used he used the Dalmatian, right, to, to get that color, right? He, he, incorporated, he, the, he incorporated the Dalmatian until he came up that, with that, okay. that clear white. Okay. Now, now, what did Kamasinski use out of that stock to do? What was he doing with that stock? With well, that stock? Kamasinski, Kamasinski had bull carriers, and supposedly they fought, right? But didn't somebody and, didn't they and, incorporate that white line? That white line came from them, didn't it? Didn't well, it, it, it could come from that. It could come from Colby because he had heavy, heavy Colby dogs. And that's why some people were, are, are, they'll swear on a Bible he added pit bull, I mean, added bull terrier to his dogs. Right, right. And, and others will swear, no way, he didn't do that. People that knew him on both sides, right? So I don't know. Maybe he did. Maybe he didn't. But just like this Hink guy, right? Through my research, uh -huh. you know, and, and people talk about, you know, people lie and old, old guy this and that, and they fake shit and this and that, right? Right. But they take what Hink said and what he wrote down and everything he did as gospel, like it's true. To me, right. he was a bullshitter and a puppy right. peddler. Right. That's all he was. But right. he had the opportunity at this time. That, that, that all this stuff was put down late 1800s or 70, whatever he was around, it was expensive to print material. Books, pictures, all that, drawings, all that stuff. He was wealthy, so he, he could afford to do that, which means he 
controlled the narrative. Gotcha. In, in his writings or his stuff, he's saying, I fought pointers and mastiffs and greyhounds. I had game fighting, this and that. That's bullshit. No, he didn't. But people, because it's 200 years ago or 100 years ago, they believe it because he wrote it down. All them colors of them dogs are in the pit bull already. You don't have to add a white dog or, or a, a, a white terrier to get a white pit bull. It's already in there. It's going to come out. Kobe didn't add that. Most of his dogs were predominantly white or white with patches, you know, like that. Brindle patches, black and white like that. But they well, say the white is in there. They just, they, but they say his white came from the uh, bull, you know, the American bull dog. I don't know. You know, they say a little bit. Well, American again, uh, American bull dog, American pit terrier. It's a fighting dog. So they had all these different names for it. It's the same fucking breed. It's the same dog. They right. just give it different names depending on where you're from or what was common for you to use or whatever name you made up, you know, uh, they, they, they used it. Right. Mm -hmm. But the pit bull name itself too is very old too. I put a, a little clip up from the 1930s, right? It's a boxing mm -hmm. movie, right? And, and the bartender there or one of the guys in there, he's talking about a boxer, a fighter. He said he's he's tough as a pit bull. So that name pit bull was used at you know back then, but there were still other people like Tudor used a different name. He called them American pit dogs or American pit bull or, or something, right? And they have they have Yankee Terrier is a name that some people use when it came to the United States. It's still a pit bull, what we call pit bull. And that's why when I go talk about the past, I use the term fighting dog because. When you start using names, people are going to take it and say, well, that's what they were called back then. Well, yeah, they were called that. They were called this and that and all kinds of different. But this Tosa, look, it's in the breed way before a Tosa was developed because the Tosa wasn't developed till the late 1800s. And the fighting dog been around longer than that. Now, when they developed the Tosa, they used, like I said, bulldog. They used mastiff, this and that. That's how they get the size and all that. But to turn around and say, may they have Tosa in them because of the way he looked. No, the Tosa has pit bull in it. And but that's part you, of their look. But could you, un could you understand the question from a person? Of course. That's why it has to be addressed. But like I said, that when I ask people, why do you think that? They're going to say, look at the way he looks. He looks like a Tosa. So I would turn around and say, the Tosa has resemblance to some pit bulls because there's pit bull in the Tosa. That's why the Tosa looks that way. So maybe he does have Tosa in him, but just because he looks like that and has some characteristics of a Tosa don't mean he has Tosa. Okay, well, let me so when they you. ask me, well, where, did, where does it come from? I'm going to say from the pit bull, from the bulldog, English side of the pit bull, because the Tosa has that in him. All right, well, let me ask you this question. Um, if, if, if people, in your opinion, if people didn't know, if take, take Mayday's performance away, okay? And you just got the phenotype. Uh, would you think a lot of more people would question it if they didn't know about his performance history? Or not, not just Mayday, or that, that, that phenotype. I might be saying the wrong dog. Barracuda, right. Mayday. Do you think people, more people would question it if the performance was, if he didn't have the performance he had? Well, yeah, probably. I would guess so. Right? And and like I said, I would ask him why. Well, he looks like a Tosa. He looks like a uh, Mastiff. And like I said, the pit bull has Mastiff in it. You got to go back to when breeds were developed and what did they use to develop them? And like I said, with the fighting dog, going back two, three thousand, four thousand years before we got them, they developed the war dogs, which are mastiffs, and in some cases a different. I forgot the name of the breed, right? To make dogs that would fight each other, because they would already fight each other, right? But when you're not using them for war, what are you going to do with them? 
They're going to use them for sport. So they used them to attack, to fight lions or attack lions in an arena. They used them to fight each other. It, it's clear that's what they did. They developed a fighting dog from those war dogs, Mastiff, that were in the UK, that were in Rome, that originally came from uh, Mesopotamia, which is, you know, Iraq, Iran, that area, Turkey, and all that. So, yeah, I can see why people say, well, he looks like that. And my thing is, well, what's wrong with him looking like that? It's in his background to look like that. Just like the, the you know, the white tick, the spotted dog, the pointer. People always assume, oh, they must have put Dalmatian in there. Why? Why would they put Dalmatian? Why would you try to make something better by putting something in that's going to decrease its performance and decrease its gameness? That don't make no sense to me. Right. So all them colors, they're in the they're in the breed. And and when people, you know, like you said, you know, uh uh I never seen no no red dogs come from two black dogs. It has nothing to do with the dog or the breed or anything. You have to look up and search how do when colors are mixed, what do you get? And that's what people do nowadays. They'll tell you how and why a certain color can come out of a dog, just like for you know, almost a hundred percent. If you breed two red red nosed dogs together, you you can't get a black nosed dog because of of the genetics or however it's done. I don't I don't know the process, but you can look it up. So any color basically can come out depending on how you put the colors together, because most of the colors, if not all the colors, are in the breed somewhere. So have yeah, ever, it can pop up. Have you ever seen a, a jet black, a jet black uh, dog with a red nose? Yeah, That's I long. haven't seen it, but you you can you can get that if one of the dogs is a red nose and the other has a black nose, and it's a black dog. Let's say a black dog with a black nose, I and see you breed it to a life. red. Yeah, you can I breed see, it to I a see. red red nosed dog. And get a black dog with a red nose, but you can't get a yeah you can't get a black nose dog by breeding two red red nose dogs together. Just red nose dogs. The mother was all black. Matter of fact, I do know, but all right, the the mother was from uh, the 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 Harris brothers or whatever. The black she was black, and the. The father was a Zebo, Zebo, and it did have some red in it though. And you know, Zebo go back to uh, some red stuff anyway. But one of the dogs came out all black with a red nose. Mm -hmm. Well, Vindicator, Zebo's brother was a red, red nose. So was their sister. And Zebo's black, black nose. And people questioned the breeding. Of, you know, again, they question it. How come he's black, black nose? And his litter mate are red, red nose. Well, there's a reason for that. It can happen. Can you imagine? Can you imagine me saying that to certain people? Certain, I would get skull dragged. They would tell me there's no way that can happen. Can you? Can you imagine some circles? And they could be no. They can know more than me. I, these circles, they can know more than me. But certain things, I guess they didn't pass in their journey, and they would deed you down like that's not happening. When you've right. seen it for yourself. Right. Yep. And, and your response, like I said, should be, how did you come to that conclusion? How do you know that? Well, it can't happen. Well, it ain't never happened. Well, I never seen it. That, that's not fact. That's not, that's not any type of, of uh, you know, proving what you're saying. It's just what you believe, what you think, or you ain't never seen it. It doesn't mean it can't happen. So well, why is that person saying it? Right, just like people. Why are they saying Mayday looks like he has Tosa in him when that look, his look structure, and you know, not in, in in it may all of it may not be in one particular dog, but the way his head is, the floppy ears, that particular structure, the way the legs come down, it's in the breed. There's dogs a hundred, two hundred years ago that had 
similar things that he has on them. Them floppy ears. The Eli dogs have floppy ears, like hound dog ears. The bully son. So it's in there. The the Bolio dogs and the Tombstone Red Baby stuff, like Tonka and that. His front end, the way shoulder, and then the leg comes straight down like that. That's the way them dogs are built. That's why they have good balance. Hey, schoolboy, what about that? Do you remember the uh, the, the, the dew claw myth? The dew claw myth when you when they used yeah. to say if you you had a dew claw, you wasn't the full pit. You remember that type stuff? Yeah, and guess, yeah. And it had me had me looking at my stuff, and a lot of them had that. And you know, if you believe that stuff, like what you supposed to do, like that's is is that yeah. true? I'm gonna ask you. I don't believe it, but is that true? Well, I'm it's if it's, it's not common for pit bulls to have dew claws. Mm-hmm. So the question, the question is, if they have them, why do they have it? Is it back there in the particular breed? Yeah, because of, you know, way, way back. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, pit bulls don't have them. So I see why people would question that. It's not a purebred pit bull. So have you ever seen so, any dew claws on, on real pit bulls? Yeah, yeah, my friend had some. My, my friend had some, and we made fun of them. Hey, how, 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 did, how, did, how did his hands perform? How his hands perform, though? They, they, well, I didn't see him perform. I don't think he kept them. I think he called them because he thought maybe some cur dog got to him. So, so y'all yeah. laughed him. Y'all laughed him right out his yard, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, he knew he knew something was funny too. But again, just because we say it, and just because there's a possibility that some cur got in there, you have to do some research. And is it possible for pit bulls to have dew claws? Where is the dew claw? Can you tell, tell us where the dew claw is? It's on their front front leg. You know, if you look at a dog's paw, there's the little nub behind their paw, right? That's that is where the dew claw would come out. That nub there is is bare, but with dew claws, it has a nail a toenail coming out. Some people got. Got that extra that extra digit that the cover coming out coming out too. You know that on that you ever met a person that got an extra digit coming out? Yeah, yeah. Well, the the thing with the dew claw, it's it's not the only thing that makes it different is it has a a toenail connected to it. All dogs have that little nub. Gotcha. Some have a toe a, a, a claw toenail that comes out. Pit bulls don't typically have that. So the toenail is what makes the difference, you're saying? I guess. The toenail is why they call it a dew claw. Yeah, right. Yeah, a dew claw. So, you know, like I said before, I don't know everything, but I try and, you know, I try and listen to all sides, back, forth, front, this and that, research history, research color, research whatever I can at the time, you know, and find out is there a possibility. And when I did research on Hinks, he just sounded like a puppy peddler, man. That, that's what he sounded like. And he promoted his dogs, and he was very famous. And a lot of people bought his dogs. Yeah, he said he did. So he's gonna, yeah, he's he going to feed them whatever him. story he can to get them to buy his shit. If somebody wants a tough-ass greyhound, they're going to say, my greyhounds are, will fight. They're game. Well, I read his son. It said, his son said the, uh, the reason why he did it, he wanted to... It was for the show, baby. It was, it was for show, more like a gentleman right. dog that looked like right. that. Or it wasn't about performing. Yeah. No, the the bull terrier. No, it was. Yeah. But like I said, if a, if a bull terrier fights, and even maybe some were game, it makes sense because they have pit bull in them. It's not the other way around. The pit bull don't have. They didn't use a bull terrier to develop the pit bull. Because it was already developed. The fighting dog was already around way before they ever thought of making a boot. But he made it for the show. Mr. Garcia, I just want to make it clear. I'm, I'm talking about that, that white one, but I do know it's other uh, bull terriers that probably was game, like that that Irish red, that I, I, Irish Dudley or something like that. It was a couple of them. They, yeah. was, used, they was used. They, they yeah. was game. I don't doubt it. I don't doubt it. I, I've seen other breeds, even a German Shepherd, fight like a pit bull. It wasn't snapping. It wasn't growling and, and barking and all that shit like they do. He took hold. He shook out his hole. He went to the legs, shoulders, 
toe to toe like that. I don't know if he was game, but he fought like a fighting dog. And, and why? Because it's in all dogs to fight at, at different levels. So why not, you know, have some anomaly, even a, a, a you know, a boxer or an Akita or something like that? Some will fight like that. But again, if they were worth a shit, if they, if they really could add something to your program, why didn't people continue with it? Because they don't compare to the pit bull. So if somebody put something in there, let's say they put Mastiff in there. Or they put White Terrier, or they put, uh, you know, Bull Terrier or something like that. They're not going to continue with the Bull Terrier side. It's basically, I want a mix in there so that I can continue forward with my breed, with my family of dogs, without having them too tight. And the farther away you get, the less influence that particular mix has in it. You know, it, it said Carver added staff, you know. No, and no, and no. come to find come to find out there was a lady who lived across the street down the road from him from him who had staff. So people figure or think that that's where he got the staff blood from. His neighbor. Now we gotta understand that uh the people we America claims claims that. That's this is historically speaking, this is what we claim as our fighting dog. Now, other countries have their own fighting dog. Like, so these dogs, people talking about like Akitas, uh, even the Chow, uh, uh, what else? Um, it's other ones, that was their representation. So, and we, they, historically speaking, the pit bull heads went up against all of them, I think, and it rained, it rained the top notch shit. So, but these these other dogs were created for fighting. As far as what right. I read, as far as what I read, it was just other countries, other countries. This is what they was bringing to the table, and our recipe right. came up with the American pit bull terrier. And the American part of it means something because uh, we ours were bigger, bigger than the imported versions. We made ours a little bigger. You know, that's why they made the American pit bull turn. But it was other fighting dogs out there in other countries, other fighting dogs. And you know what I mean? We just yeah, we just we just took the title. We took the title. So we, we can be proud of that. We took the title. But those other dogs, even though you might see them as show dogs now, they came from they were built for to to combat. To combat. Right. Yep. Now now the difference would be, or the question I would ask. Did they continue breeding them? And if they did for that function, and if they did, what is the quality? And I've seen a lot of different, for the, like example, the Tosis. I've seen them on video fight. Uh, uh, the Kangal from Afghanistan or wherever it's from. I've seen them fight. They, they don't compare to a pit bull, man. Not even close. Not even close. So either their development, you know, what, what the end product they have, that's what it is. Or they didn't have high standards, and they it's a it's a like an oddity, a curi curiosity, you know. But they don't they don't exhibit the ability, the speed, the strength, the punishing ability, the gameness that a pit bull does. So yeah, other cultures had fighting dogs, and maybe in the past they were better. They had all that stuff, but those breeds didn't they didn't continue like like we continued with pit bull. So they're they're just not as good, in my opinion. When, when you look, when you've seen a lot of, when you've seen a lot like I have, you you have an opinion on what is good and what is not, or what's average, above average, great, and all that, right? And yeah. and a lot of people don't have that understanding. They see a dog fight and they think, man, that's a fighting dog. My opinion might be that dog he's fighting, but he's a piece of shit. He's not very good at it. He don't have no heart. He don't have no finish. He don't have no game. He don't have no ability. He's slow, dumb, whatever it is. So it's more than just two dogs fighting. There's there's a lot more involved in it, you know. Uh huh. Even even when you know, like here's an example of dog working. You know, he's doing good. 
people will put all the dogs in the same category that's working a hide or working a tug of war. There's a difference how the dog works. There's a difference in, in his intensity, in his speed, in his strength, in his violence, in his want. You know, you see a dog run a treadmill one way, you see another dog work a treadmill the other way. It's not the same. Not saying that either one is a is in better condition or not, but there's different levels or different types uh, for the dog to go about doing almost anything. But if you don't see the difference between you know quality and non-quality, how do you judge it? Excellent, excellent. Yeah, no, that's a great question. So I just, I just, yeah, I just wanted to bring that point up about May Day, because everybody, look at him, he's got toast in him. How do you know that? Well, he don't look like no pit bull bullshit. Pit bulls have all everything he has on them. It's in the pit bull background. And, and like I said, why does that toaster that you po posted up look that way? Because it has Mastiff and Bulldog in it, a fighting dog in it. That's why the Tosa fight, because of the Mastiff and the Bulldog. So which came first, the Bulldog or the, or the Tosa? The Bulldog. So that's why pit bulls look that way. Not because of the Tosa. They were around long before the Tosa was ever developed. And if you look at, at May Day pictures of like when he's in younger or he's in keep, you know, he, he doesn't look so Tosa ish, you know, <laughs> he looks like a pit bull because there's tons of them that look that way. You know, I have a picture somewhere in condition. He looks like grand champion yellow. He looks like he looks, uh, you know, he has a similar build to, to some of the uh, Bolio dogs or even the Daibo dogs, you know, a little bit taller, longer body, deep chest like that, you know, not unusual for him to look the way he does. So when, you know, when you see Mayday stuff and, and, and you see, you know, uh, the Mayday and Buck and all that, you know, where it's developed into a bloodline and, and a family of dogs, because those dogs were so prepotent and, and the build is similar in a lot of them, that's what you're going to get. That's why they all look that way. Yeah, that's how you can tell a good stud or a good, a good female or whatever, you know. Bolio dogs look a certain way because of Bolio himself, right? And and he resembles his daddy Zeke, but he don't he don't look like a black widow dog, and he's and he's heavily back widow bred because his his build, his ability, his traits, and all that took over. So, so does color, how, how much does color, how much a role does color play, like play in performance of a hound or anything like, like some, like, you know, another old myth is that black dogs run hotter than other dogs. Is, is these things true? Well, the color itself, you know, you can use color in some certain ways, but as far as performance, you know, like like you said, let's say some people say, well, black dogs run hotter in the heat. Okay, why is that? Because, you know, black absorbs heat. So, but does that mean black dogs, as a general rule, run hotter than other do colored dogs? No. Anything based on performance, as far as color goes, it, there's no correlation to that. There's other factors involved. So if you have a bunch of wide chested black dogs that ain't got no air and you keep breeding them, that's what you're going to get. But it's not because they're black. 
because they're wide chested instead of deep chested. <laughs> but again, and, like you like know, most time, of them have short air. Time, time, and these evolution and stuff brings us to the truth. Like you're like, if you're stuck in your circles, you could be around an old, a old head, an old legend that you know is where, but he'll tell you different things that really are myths that you might get a, you might find the truth out from the other side of the country. You know, are you right. supposed to go back to your old head and disrespect them? No, you got to understand that, you know, it's just like sometimes when you back in the day, they give you certain information. They might not even know the reasons why they're doing it. They was just told. So when you run across somebody that can really break it down, why you're doing this, that's a that's kind of a rare thing because a lot of us came up on the old two handfuls and one one splash of this, not really knowing the measurements, yeah. exact measurements and stuff like that. So when you hear even younger people telling you, like, like I'm gonna shout out Welcome Down Ram, when he telling telling you about the absorption of the muscles and the oxygen levels and stuff like that, like a lot of us ain't get that from our old heads back in the day. We was just told to go walk right. the dog. Walk the dogs to the paws, to the paws ain't till they till they sore, basically. You don't know what you do. Right. It might take you forever to walk the dog till the paws get sore. You understand? And then they'll tell you rest them. Blah, blah, blah. But see, people that people, the new people that get interested and ask questions and they reading books enough, they're gonna question the old heads. And and that's when the old heads can tell them like what they really know. But it's never a disrespect thing. It's always people are eager to learn and it might yeah. come out like it may come out like they sound green as I don't know what, but basically it's an honest question. It's an honest question. Somebody trying to move forward to the next page. That's all. Right. Absolute. Yeah. Absolute. The 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 in the past because you know people were not as educated and uh, the information was not as available. There's no studies done on fighting dogs or a lot of even performance animals. Right. The old heads couldn't tell you the why. They could tell you how to do it. And they had an eye for a dog and they knew how to condition. And, and uh, you know, knew what to feed and how to feed and what worked and what didn't. And even used steroids and, you know, uh, different things, you know. But they don't, they don't know the science. The science always comes after. Like a lot of stuff, I don't know the science behind what I did, I just know the results. So I can tell you that part. And then it would behoove someone to go, go search, go, go look and see, you know, all you got to do is Google it. You know, schoolboy said this. So Google what he said, you know, do, do, uh, do, does this work for can or, or can I feed my canine this? Right. And it'll tell you whether it's good for canines or not. But the old guys didn't didn't do research like that. They were taught a certain way or they learned a certain way. They're going to give their dogs, you know, toast and Wheaties and all kinds of stuff. Right. So for us, we want to know why are you using Wheaties? What's the nutritional value? Well, it's carbs and it's some protein and this and that vitamin like that. They didn't know all that and they didn't care, really. But as far as having knowledge, how to work dogs, how to breed dogs, how to do certain things. They had that knowledge. They just don't understand the science behind it. So, yeah, people should ask everything. That That's one of the reasons I'm here. You can ask me anything. And I'll tell you, regardless of what I tell you, test it, check it, research it. Maybe you'll come back to me and teach me something. Hey, schoolboy, when you did this, it's fast twitch muscle. And, you know, this is why endurance is built up. And this is how strength works. And you know, lactic acid buildup in the muscles and all that, you know, we oh, understand, God. you know, what we're doing. We just don't know all the science behind it. But, you know, now is, is there's more advancements in that and people can, and it I could can help them, you. you know, I can show you, I can show you a bunch of new, new, new ways to fuck up. That's what I can show you a bunch of new ways to fuck up. New well, I talk about, <laughs> I talk about mistakes all the time and I guarantee you almost everyone or, if not every mistake that I talk about, I made it. 